Let's talk about the state of Tesla's full self-driving. This is always a fun subject because it inevitably stirs up a lot of controversy. On the one hand, it's the most dangerous software ever created. On the other hand, it's the most important invention of the 21st century. And luckily for us, we've got some pretty significant updates from both sides of the argument. Tesla's FSD beta version 10.12 is dropping with major updates just as new investigations into so-called Tesla crashes are making headlines again. And this comes at the same time that we are learning traffic deaths in 2021 reached the highest number in 16 years. So there's a lot to digest here and let's try and figure out what's going on with full self-driving and explore if the technology can actually help us to save people's lives. We can start off with the latest software update to beta testers. This is version 10.12. It's one of those very hotly anticipated updates because this one carries with it a lot of new features. This is still an incremental step forward, not a full refresh. That's likely to come soon with version 11. So we've got the release notes for the new software and we've got a few hours out now of in-car video from beta testers that I've gone ahead and watched so that you don't have to. There are a couple of really cool new additions going on with 10.12, mostly the visualizations. We can now see on the display when a car door is open. That shows that Tesla knows the difference between a closed door and an open door and can take that factor into account as it makes decisions. And we're also seeing turn signals on other vehicles visualized on the display for the first time. Again, a useful factor to consider when trying to judge how other cars are going to behave. As far as the driving improvements go, the release notes specify that the car should be more confident moving through unprotected left turns and yellow lights. It also references some very specific areas where Tesla used new video clips and auto labeling to improve performance. For example, they write, improved the recall and geometric accuracy of all lane productions by adding 180,000 video clips to the training set and improved precision of the is parked attribute on vehicles by adding 41,000 clips to the training set, solved 48% of failure cases captured by our telemetry of 10.11. If you add them all up, it seems like Tesla used at least 250,000 new video clips just in this one update. If you're not familiar, anytime that FSD screws up and requires an intervention from the driver, the car will save a few seconds of video from before and after the incident and then upload it to Tesla for review. Testers can also manually flag and report certain events while driving, and in some cases, Tesla engineers will broadcast a request to all vehicles in the fleet to send them video of a certain situation. They can ask every Tesla on the road to record and send them video of a moose on the road or a canoe tied to a minivan. Then all of those clips get labeled, either by a person or an auto-labeling supercomputer, and then that data trains the self-driving neural net. Elon Musk has recently said that it will require billions of miles, if not tens of billions of miles of video data to actually achieve fully autonomous driving. From what we're seeing in real world video recordings of the new software in action, it definitely does look pretty smooth in most situations, but still has a lot of issues in those edge cases. Left turns are still looking pretty timid on entry, like the car is having trouble deciding whether it wants to go or not, but once it makes the decision, there is definitely a big improvement with sending its way through the turn quickly and confidently. If anything, it seems like the biggest issue with the system performance in the latest video is that the car is still too timid in difficult situations. Like when it doesn't know what to do, it will either slow to a crawl or just stop entirely in the middle of traffic. Which is not great, but it's also better than going to the other side where you have a robot car driving too recklessly. I've only seen one instance in the latest update where the car tried to kamikaze itself into a solid object, which is a great improvement because that used to be a regular fixture in these videos. 
Most of the big failures with FSD beta right now seem to be linked more with mapping and navigation and not the actual performance of the driving. Like twice in a Tesla daily video, his car tried to avoid construction by driving him onto a dead end street. And in a dirty Tesla video, his car tried to avoid a closed road by turning the wrong way onto a one way street. So there's some kind of a disconnect between the vision and the navigation. The two can't seem to work together to solve a problem very well just yet. Of course, we can't have a step forward without a step backwards. So at the same time that Tesla's software is making gains, the controversy around Tesla vehicle crashes is flaring up again. Most recently, we have this NHTSA investigation launched into a crash in California. I want to mention this specifically because reporting on this one has been wildly off base. I first heard this story as a Tesla plowed into a bunch of construction workers and killed four of them, and Autopilot is to blame for the whole thing. That didn't happen. All we really know is that a Tesla Model S was traveling east on the Pacific Coast Highway in Newport Beach at 12.45 AM, when it first hit the curb and then hit construction equipment that was on the side of the road. Three construction workers were sent to the hospital with non-life-threatening injuries, and three people inside the car were killed on the scene. That is the extent of the facts that we have. From the news footage, it looks like the car went head-on into the bucket of a front-end loader, but it's hard to tell. The NHTSA has now added this collision to the list of over 30 Tesla crash investigations they suggest may have happened when Autopilot was engaged. However, the organization has not yet verified that Autopilot was active or at fault in this crash and many of the others in question. Now, I'm not saying investigating crashes is bad. It's obviously a good thing to try and figure out what went wrong. It's just this inherent focus on Tesla and Autopilot that gets so bizarre. I mean, we know why the media does it. They need clicks to earn ad revenue. That's fine, we do the same thing with this YouTube channel. But I can't figure out why the NHTSA does it, unless they're somehow also making money off exploiting Tesla, which obviously wouldn't seem right. It especially feels wrong for these regulators to be spending so much energy obsessing over Tesla when we're just learning that 42,915 Americans died in motor vehicle crashes in 2021 alone. So even if Tesla specifically did cause those 30 crashes or whatever, it's just an insignificant drop in a gigantic bucket of death and destruction taking place on American roads. What's even more crazy is that this is the highest death toll from vehicle collisions in 16 years. Think about how much safer your car is now compared to 16 years ago. In 2006, I was driving a Dodge Neon, which was a very popular car at the time, and it was a death trap. There were no side curtain airbags or advanced crumple zones. It didn't have collision detection or stability control or traction control. It didn't even have anti-lock brakes. So to think that we have all of this modern tech and it's not making the roads any less deadly is kind of baffling. Either the tech doesn't work at all and is just making things worse, or humans are becoming even more dangerous road users. Which one seems more likely to you? That leaves us in a pretty tricky spot. We know that human drivers can't be trusted, but we also know that robot drivers aren't ready to be trusted yet either. Tesla still lists autopilot and full self-driving as level 2 autonomous features, though the argument could definitely be made that they are in fact level 3 at this point. Level 3 autonomy is defined by the Society of Automotive Engineers when functions like steering, braking, and acceleration are automated, but the driver still has to be ready to step in. I don't know about you, but to me, that sounds like autopilot. Elon Musk has said that he thinks Tesla's FSD beta can reach level 4 autonomy by the end of this year, or maybe by this time next year. That means that the car could operate without human supervision at all under certain circumstances. So, this might mean that driver monitoring can be switched off, but only during highway driving. That seems like something that Tesla could reasonably achieve in the near future. They're pretty close to that already. City streets, though, could still take a while. 
This is the level of autonomy that Waymo and Cruise robo-taxis are at right now. They can operate without a driver, but only in very limited situations. These robo-taxis are only available in Phoenix and San Francisco, and are geofenced to very specific areas of those cities where they operate. These are areas where the companies behind the technology have created highly detailed 3D maps of the streets. Tesla doesn't use HD mapping. They rely on their own vision-based neural network. The idea is that if humans can drive with just our eyes and our brains, then robots can drive with just digital cameras and artificial intelligence. The company has been slowly transitioning all of their cars to a pure vision-based autopilot software. They've even removed radar sensors from all of the new production cars as of April 2022, when they announced that all new Model 3 and Model Y vehicles delivered to Europe and the Middle East would be vision-based only. This was the last market to get the transition. That's a good thing, because the more cars running the software, the more data will be produced and the faster improvements can be made. The same goes for the FSD beta program. More testers will lead to more improvements coming at a faster pace. Elon Musk said in April that over 100,000 drivers are currently participating in FSD beta testing, and he's also said that he hopes to see that number rise to 1 million by the end of this year. That's 10 times more real-world data for Tesla's AI training, and we know that the key to solving full self-driving is to first solve real-world AI. So, it all kind of flows in the same direction. Tesla is building significantly more cars every year that are collecting significantly more data that is all being fed into this artificial intelligence program that will eventually be able to take over the act of driving the car completely and be able to do it at a level that is much safer than a human being, or at least safer than your average human being, which, as we know, is really not very safe at all. That would bring Tesla to the top level of autonomy, level 5, which is when a car can travel from any location to any other location with no need for human monitoring or intervention. That's the point where you can just remove the steering wheel and pedals because there would be no need for them. This is going to be preposterously difficult to achieve, but from where we are at right now, it seems like Tesla is the only company with any shot at doing it. Because vision-based autonomy is likely the only way that it can work in every location. Without vision, you need mapping, and that would require a company like Waymo to create a high-definition map of every road in every place and keep it constantly up-to-date and accurate, which they probably can't do. So when it comes to solving this problem of mass death in traffic, autonomy is probably the only thing that can do it. If making the cars themselves significantly safer didn't help at all, then we obviously need to change the behavior of the driver to get any positive result. If we're talking about human drivers, we already know that's going to be impossible. We suck at this so badly that it's an irreversible disaster. But if we're talking about robot drivers, then we know it will be extremely difficult, but there's no reason to believe that it can't be done. What do you think? Driverless cars next year? I highly doubt it, but we'd love to hear how long you think this might take. Don't forget to give this video a thumbs up today if you liked it. That is so important for getting our content out to more people. If you enjoy the content, then you'd probably also enjoy our weekly newsletter. So sign up with the link down below at theteslaspace.com. A huge thank you to all of our Patreon supporters who are listed on the screen now. You help us make the best content we can, and we really appreciate it. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you in the next one.